everyone welcome back um, hope things are going really good for you today we're gonna end up talking about uh, Joseph uh, and the story of Joseph so um, where we're at in God's Word is basically we're gonna meet Abraham's grandsons and his great-grandsons a couple things that are revealed about God's redemptive story through Joseph's story is first we see that God's plans uh, are never thwarted despite the best human efforts even when something is meant for evil like you know getting rid of your brother and selling him into slavery God can use it to be uh, or for his own good and second we begin to see uh, God start to fulfill his promise to Abraham to be a great nation uh, the people who uh, the Messiah will come from and uh, anyways so for the hook question, uh, I think this is a really good one, actually. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're talking to junior high kids or adults. Uh, this is a good question. It says, if you were up for it, talk about one of the worst days you've had in recent memory. Or um, have you ever been accused of something that you really didn't do? What happened? Okay, guys, um, for transition time, um, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. But uh, it's pretty important to to go ahead and just read that to the group before you actually uh, tell the story, because that's going to set up the story well for you. This is a big chunk of scripture. I ho I just want to say I hope everybody is remembering to encourage people to to use the bookmark. And so the the passage passages for the bookmark are eight chapters long. So the transition really sums up those passages and sets the story up. Okay, so here's the story from God's Word. Joseph's brothers didn't recognize him when they were talking to him. So Joseph decided to go along with it and let them buy food. And he told the palace manager to fill their sacks with the food and to put Joseph's favorite silver mug and his money into the, his youngest brother's sack. So that's what he did. See, Joseph was planning to test his brothers with, that, with a setup. And the brothers left early the next morning. And after they traveled a little while... Joseph sent some guards to uh, after them, and he, they ended up going through their stuff. And they were all kind of like, what's going on? And they were really shocked when the guards found the Joseph's silver cup and the money that they had used to buy the food with in Benjamin, the youngest brother's um, bag. And so all the brothers were like, how would I get in there? And we're not thieves. And they tore their clothes because that was a way to show uh, they were really upset back then. And they loaded up their donkeys and headed back into the city to plead their case before the prime minister, Joseph. And when they stood before the prime minister, uh, Judah, one of the brothers, spoke up and said, We don't know how the money and your cup got into our baby brother's bag, but please don't punish him. Uh, punish me instead. Our father would die if anything happened to him. And I swore to my father that I would take care of him. Let me be your slave and set the boy free. Well, with this display of brotherly love, it really got to Joseph. And he couldn't keep his real identity a secret any longer. Uh, he sent all the palace attendants out and he broke down and he wept and he explained to his brothers who he really was. He wept so loud that the people outside of the building could hear him. And they're like, wow, what's going on? And so his brothers were speechless when he told them. And Joseph told them again, he says, I'm your brother, Joseph. You remember the one you sold into slavery? Don't beat yourselves up over it, though. See, I learned that God was using the situation for his own good. You meant it to harm me and to get rid of me. But God had other plans. He would use this situation for saving many lives. Now hurry back and tell our father Jacob, all, and all of you, come live with me. I will ask Pharaoh, and we will set aside some land for you all. And the brothers were stunned and a little shocked, and they began to realize what they were hearing was true. And they all wept and hugged each other. And Pharaoh heard about all this, and he told Joseph to send for his family, and he did. And 
Jacob or Israel when he heard this was excited and unbelieved and he just could barely believe it. So, but yet he still he packed up all of his stuff and the whole family and all their possessions moved up uh, and they lived in the land of Goshen. So as usual, I would uh, reconstruct and uh, read it together. Um, remember, uh, spoon feed them a little bit. Um, get them get him going. But uh, we want to focus on the big four questions. And one of the, the first questions is, what do we learn about God in this story? Well, there's a lot. Um, number one, like Joseph said, um, God uses bad things sometimes to show his glory and his goodness. It's, uh, this is a true, this is one of the stories uh, that really displays God's sovereignty, not only on a personal level, like with Joseph and his family and his covenant people, but also on a national level. He, he, he raised up the king of Pharaoh and the land of Egypt to be able to sustain um, producing uh, food for people to be fed, for uh, even through a famine. And um, it's an amazing story of God's sovereignty. Um, what do we learn about man or ourselves in this story? Um, you know, I got to be honest. This one is, uh, is one of those stories that makes me stop and think, could I be as forgiving as Joseph was if I had been so betrayed and hurt by, uh, by my family? And uh, this is a tough one. You know, you really got to look at that. Um, what did you learn new in this story? I don't know. The answers are really going to vary. But I really like that question because it doesn't matter. People will always answer that and, and they'll always be willing to put up. Yeah, you know, I think I picked this up and it's kind of cool. Then you can play off of those, those answers. Um, the last question in the big four questions is what should I do differently because of this story? Um, you know, you should be looking where God's working. You should be thinking about the many blessings that you do have and be thankful for those things and make sure that that keeps you having the right perspective. God is in control of things. Uh, extra questions. Uh, the first one is, why did Joseph test his brothers? Ah, um, well, let's be honest. Uh, they suck. They sold him into slavery for crying out loud. <laughs> I mean, you kind of got to be a little careful. And they weren't real happy with him the last time that they saw. So he was really looking to see if they were genuine uh, and if anything had changed in their hearts and their minds. And uh, what did he want for himself out of this test? Well, you know, I think he really wanted to see a changed heart in those brothers. And, you know, Judah really stepped up and, and, and uh, did that. Um, the second extra question is, share a time when you forgave someone who hurt you. How did it all turn out? Um, it would be really good if you could get to this question uh, in, this, in this particular, um, in this lesson. That's a great question. And, you know, you'd be surprised how many people are walking around and they've still got a lot of hurt uh, and more emotional scars that they're carrying around and they haven't settled issues. And that's a dangerous thing. We need to take care of... We need to forgive from the heart, even if the person doesn't acknowledge or ex or uh, um, even care that they hurt you. You know that stuff will just eat people up. You got to help them get rid of it. So, anyways, um, moving on, the uh, in between things to do in between group. Um, I love this one. Take time this week to thank God for all the things you have in your life that made you who you are and brought you closer to Him. Good things and bad things, man. God's all about changing your character and he uses every opportunity to do that uh, the second thing is ask someone in your group to share some of the blessings that God has put in their lives this is really cool too because you get to thinking about what God has done for other people you get to hear how God has worked with other people as well so really good stuff um, the memory verse for this week is Genesis 46 3 through 4 I am and that's a promise that God made to Israel or Jacob uh, it's it's actually uh, a restating of the promise that God made to Isaac and Abraham prior. So thanks, guys. I hope your week's going good, and I hope these are helpful. Send me your feedback.